Hi. Um, so uh, community training, we're going to go over um, a slightly modified schedule, but essentially covering the same to topic. So um, I'm going to have a uh, talk about three different styles of training that have gone on in the community over the past um, since the last uh, cycle or during this last cycle this last release excuse me so um, so uh, we'll talk about uh, the Tokyo training first um, then we'll we'll talk about upstreaming I can talk about um, San Francisco um, that we went through a series of um, uh, what was it ended up being six sessions in different user groups um, Stefano um, does um, upstream training before the weekend before the, the summit, which has been uh, really fun. I participated part in part of it this last round. So you want to start? I'm Kato. Uh, I, I, I talked to upstream training in Japan. Uh, uh, Japan OpenStack user group held upstream trains two times and short sessions four times. Uh, our objective is contribution to community, uh, not to use only, and active development from Japan. Uh, so uh, we more familiar support to attendee in Japan. Our motivation, why not, why in local? Uh, Japan is uh, too far, uh, USA and Paris, and so travel cost is low. And in Japan, language barrier is a very important problem, including me. Uh, and in Japan, community making help each other across company and most important thing teaching is most effective study oh. how we started uh, we decide venue date and time and mentors and students and materials uh, we are uh, weekday training and uh, holidays, Lego trainings, uh, full day time. And mentors from uh, core developers. And students are uh, OpenStack engineer from many companies. Uh, this is uh, our timeline. Uh, this picture is our Lego training rehearsal. Uh, we bought Lego myself and consider scenarios and uh, we consulted with agile trainers of Lego training. And in Japan, uh, original selecting guide Bugs, uh, uh, selecting bugs guidance. Uh, low hanging fruit tag is uh, good to newcomers, but not so many bugs. So we select the bug from status new, confirmed, triage, and importance is low, wish list, and undecided. Uh, we run those three tips. Uh, uh, we use public cloud services. Uh, public cloud service is used to uh, dev stack environment for students. Uh, this avoids troubles of the network traffic, machine specs, and configuration, and so on. Now, second tip is uh, Social gathering. Uh, after classroom, uh, we go to drinking. Uh, <coughs> uh, 
third tip is uh, troubleshooting of registration to Launchpad and OpenStack Foundation ID. Uh, account mismatch, uh, contact information registration, and so on. So, so we want to uh, share this experience and uh, let's try uh, to enlarge developer company community and uh, we will support and advise to you in Japanese experience. And we are welcome to Tokyo next summit. Thank Heard you. So can I ask you a couple of questions? Um, so the materials you use obviously use Legos. Um, I'm not sure, how, there's probably not too many people that are familiar with what upstream training is, but, um, but uh, obviously there's Legos involved, um, which is uh, part of the agile training. But um, yeah, and Steph's gonna talk about that. But uh, were you able to use um, laptops in uh, part of what you're doing where people sh would show up with laptops or did you exclusively use cloud instances to, to, um, to uh, for the students? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are pre preparing from the HP, HP guys right. uh, donated or HP instances and uh -huh. prepared instances for each student. And, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And how did that work? Was that they was that easier? You think for them just to use a browser and they didn't have to worry about any configuration or anything? And you got you got you up started. Um, everyone started faster. Or was yeah. there any problems with it being remote? Uh, yeah, we are uh, before the training. We are testing the network environment and uh, connect to the uh, HP cloud from the uh, classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, Test the uh, network latency or uh, network performance, and also we are preparing the uh, dev stack configuration file for uh, because the uh, the configuration file is uh, uh, main uh, have uh, depend on the uh, memory size or uh, uh, CPU cores number of CPU cores. Right. So uh, yeah, previously uh, before the before the training uh, we be tested the uh, configuration file is uh, easily uh, fitted to this instances. Okay. So it, because of the because of the prerequisites to run DevStack, it was better to <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because of the prerequisites for DevStack, it was better to have um, it pre-set up so you didn't have to worry about uh, the the student showing up with some something that was uh, not capable or would be difficult to support DevStack. Is that pretty much what you're saying? I I yeah. can I can give also that yes. experience in the in upstream training. And maybe we should go back and and describe a little bit upstream training, what it is and why we set it up. Um, we have um, this program. We noticed, first of all, that contributing to OpenStack can be very, very um, complicated at first. Uh, the project is extremely complex. There are s many projects that are different. Um, all the projects, are almost 40 at this point, or 38 projects with uh, hundreds of uh, Git repositories um, that move very fast, very rapidly. So the usual slow, I mean, the usual approaches for open source projects, uh, the suggestions that they find around are fix find small bugs and uh, assign them to you and fix them and, you know, buy goodwill from the other developers by fixing small bugs. In OpenStack, even those small bugs or this, these small steps may be too hard to solve. Um, and there is also one other issue. When, when, um, larger corporations or smaller corporations uh, join OpenStack and they want to contribute to OpenStack, they may have, um, n they may not have the experience to deal with such large uh, and complex social structure uh, processes that are been put in place after in five years of existence by uh, the OpenStack community. So with those problems in mind, I um, and, and others inside the community started thinking about a training program explicitly designed for 
contributors, for new contributors joining OpenStack, developers, engineers, not managers, just people who whose job is to land a patch inside OpenStack, um, any of the projects. And uh, um, that simple task, land a patch inside OpenStack, has two major aspects. One is technical. So um, how do I get all of my accounts configured? Where do I find the development environment? How do I configure that sort of stuff? How do I get myself to the point where I can replicate the bug that I want to fix or um, add the feature that I need to add? Um, where do I find documentation? Where do I describe um, a new feature? Or where do I find the bugs? So technical aspects. On the other side of things, there is a second problem, which is all the social norms, all the processes that are put in place. So per, for example, in OpenStack, we have a bug or, or, or a new feature need to be uh, need, needs to be approved by a technical by the a technical leadership, the project technical leadership, and um, and every uh, commit, every code contributions, uh, every patch needs to be discussed in the open, uh, publicly on a, on a system that is called Garrett, and on Garrett Review .org, we have public discussions about those bugs. For some cultures and for some some um, societies, it's very easy to write a patch and have put it out, out in the public space and have someone describe uh, or, or give a vote to that patch that is most likely going to be negative the first time you do it. For other societies, for other cultures, having a negative vote immediately, it's a big, it's a big disappointment. It can, be, can create, can create, um, uh, can create cultural issues. And, and, um, with that in mind, we designed this, this training to describe how to deal with these two aspects, the technical and the social, the social aspect. Uh, we do it over two days. The first day is the Friday before the summit starts, the Saturday before the summit starts, and it's mostly the technical aspect. The second day, uh, we have this uh, a simulation of how OpenStack is developed and released with uh, the milestones, the well, first the design side, uh, then the the development cycles with milestones, release cycle, and uh, release uh, candidates, and the final release, and we simulate that with Legos. Her ergo, you saw the pictures of the Legos on the stage, and the second day is the Sunday. Uh, we've done it in Atlanta the first time. We trained about 20 people. Uh, we've done it again in uh, Paris. And we had about 60, um, about the same amount of people this time in Vancouver uh, yesterday and, uh, and Saturday. And it was pretty good. It was fun. <laughs> I got to join for just part of it, but for the LEGO session, I got to join, and that was a blast. So it was uh, very, very similar. I was actually, I had really high expectations, and it exceeded my expectations. It really almost immediately emulated the development community. People's personalities came out. People kind of uh, assumed certain roles, and it actually worked really well. It was really cool. It was, it was an amazing experience. So I'm looking forward to replicating it in other places as well. Um, so uh, um, can I ask a couple questions? I was going to be an uh, instigator and ask some probing questions. Um, and I can talk a little bit about what we've done in San Francisco, which is uh, slightly different, but aims to be similar in the future. Um, so I guess you talked a little bit about why community. Um, that was one of my questions. But the other one would be a kind of a follow-on would be, um, how, is, how is the upstream training different than the, the available commercial training? So upstream training is explicitly targeted at this community. And uh, kind kind of isolate it's, it's designed to be um, exposing the dynamics that happen inside a collaboration when it's done across multiple cultures and across multiple companies so one way that we simulate that with the Lego is that we have the room uh, with um, three major uh, groups three major teams one group is uh, simulating the uh, upstream community. So the PTL and the developers who have uh, already been contributing to OpenStack. And then there is another team 
that is simulated by a company that is takes the role of a company with a CEO and the product manager and the scrum master um, having their own uh, objectives. And then uh, the third group is random developers, random contributors, the cows, monkeys, if you want. Um, we give them the same objective. We, uh, we have a piece of Lego um, that's, that's like a corner of a, of a block of a city. And we give them the task of completing the block. Um, and uh, and uh, they all need to come up with their own plan. So the first iteration, the three groups, they go and, and describe by themselves. They set their own objectives. For example, uh, I want to expand and create a park, or another group uh, wants to create a new set of, a new, a new building. Um, but soon they will find what they would they would so they do the planning phase and then they start the execution phase and at the very first iteration they realize that their plan needs need to be coordinated first um, so what happens is very nicely it's very interesting how for example the CEOs uh, immediately try to remove the cows and hire the contribute the random contributors it's very funny um, then, um, then they start talking to the PTLs and say, "Hey, wait a second. How, why about, how about you leave me this slot and I build on the other side?" Um, yesterday, uh, for example, one other example was the company decided to build a gas station, and as soon as they revealed the, their plans, the PTLs and the con the existing community they immediately went and say, "No gas station here. We can't have it. It's polluting and noisy." So the, the company had to change their plans and to luckily they had in their business that they could build a, a electric cars charging station instead. <laughs> so all these dynamics are exposed. And it's different uh, uh, because companies usually want to train on something that is generating revenues. And, and in this case, uh, to go to your question, in this case, what we really favor is to exposing the value of collaboration instead, how you can uh, across companies, uh, by joining joining forces, you end up building a much larger piece than you were uh, if you just c um, used the funding and the resources of one corporation. Yeah, when it, kind of a side note, one of the the groups that was formed as a, uh, a company, they decided that they were going to uh, just contribute resources. So they decided they gathered up all the pink Legos they could find. And they showed up to our table and dumped a whole bunch of pink Legos, saying, "Here you go." It was, it was kind of, it was the whole thing was very fun. Um, so, uh, what would be another good question? Um, so, where does the training usually happen? I guess we have two examples here. One that was, well, I'll let you answer the question. Well, for us, um, I try to set it up before the summit because um, it only extend. Already, a lot of uh, people are being sent by co their corporations to the summits and I uh, try to capture uh, some of them for another, you know, by extending only a couple of days, their stays. Um, that's one way to do it. And I'm gonna keep doing it. Oh yeah, the first time the rental uh, 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 volunteered from uh, one company, uh, a meeting room, and uh, we are uh, just uh, 20 people uh, attended our uh, training. So uh, the second time is uh, uh, in Japan, uh, we have doing the Open Staff Day in Tokyo in this February, February uh, uh, in just a uh, hotel with uh, this October's price, same as October's price. And uh, we are co-located uh, co with the uh, event and uh, using to doing the upstream training second, second times. And uh, uh, also the <coughs> Yeah, uh, the, the, our uh, upstream training is very community based. So, trainer or a mentor or uh, operators or their uh, all 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 member are volunteers from the companies and uh, uh, the very rare case of uh, collaborating the uh, members from different companies are creating the one uh, training and. Uh, and also a uh, student or uh, also collaborating in the training of Lego or uh, each other uh, uh, ask a question about how to do the, the dev stack or how to how to uh, 
uh, recover that uh, trouble. Uh, this is very. Uh, uh, from my uh, experience, that is uh, very rare case and very uh, mm, uh, community. Uh, that this is a community, I think. Um, how do people get involved, Steph? Um, that's that's a very good point. Uh, we have uh, regular calls for mentors, and uh, because mentors and teachers are all volunteers, also for upstream training, the the only person that is um, sort of, sort of, well, I, it's my my job to, to be to organize it. But um, uh, the and the foundation provides for the venue, uh, the food, um, the cost of the Lego. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, everything else is provided by mentors and, and students uh, and teachers who uh, um, sign up for for help. And we publish calls uh, during the year for to get more people involved. Uh, yeah, from so if I wanted to set one of these up, what, what are the minimum requirements? Do I need like two consecutive days? I think that's what you typically do for the summit. Is, is, and is it four hour days or is it eight hour days? That kind of thing. I understand the venue, all that part makes sense, but what's, what's the actual time commitment? So uh, for, for us, it's two days, eight hours. Um, but I'm, I'm really starting to think that um, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work not only for the teachers and, and uh, the mentors, um, but also for, for the logistics and all that. And, and for the companies that are, being, that are sh sending people away, it's two, two extra nights. Sometimes it, it's a lot. Um, so the very minimum, I think that you can do with, uh, with with a six hours, uh, six one day in six hours, and but but you would require uh, preparation before that. So because I think that the technical aspects are not really that complicated, that can be at least partially done uh, by people themselves before coming to the to the live sessions. Um, it requires a little bit more preparation, but you, you can do it. And uh, the um, the Lego part can last two hours, two hours and a half, uh, with, uh, with um, by allowing more time to do the preparation before the retrospective afterwards. And depending on the practice on your uh, facilitators in the room, um, the role of those facilitators is quite, it's quite important because they can help triggering some of the um, behaviors, social, social aspects, interactions. I did enjoy the frenetic energy that happened having it in 45 minutes. I mean, everyone was just like running around cr with their hair on fire. It was, <laughs> it didn't give anybody a chance to like t catch their breath. So it was. That's true. It, I think that actually was a good thing. It, you know, nobody really sat and thought about what they were doing um, in the broader sense. They just had a mission. And they went off and did it. And yeah. So. so 45, 50 minutes is the three iterations, but you need at least 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after mm. for you know for the setup and for the right. for the retrospectives that's, of that's course where yeah you're the right two hours of course um oh yes hi i'd like to know if the courseware is uh, uh registered by some company who owns the ip associated with the uh, method you mentioned uh for upstream training all the all the material is uh, under Creative Commons. Um, it's open source. It's open source. Uh, creative Commons. Under, you know, yeah. Creative Commons. So it's uh, so actually that's an excellent segue to my next question. Thank you for that. Um, so I was going to ask where is the where is the content? So um, it is licensed under Creative Commons. It's in a project called uh, Training Guides. Um, it's out under OpenStack. If you go to GitHub, um, it's uh, slash OpenStack slash training guides. Um, it's uh, co-located with some other training material that um, uh, um, some people that have been uh, working with me um, have been working on for uh, about a year as a part-time project. Um, we're slowly actually, Steph has done such an amazing job with Upstream, we actually completely changed our format and we're merging what we had into the format that Steph has. So it's gonna be a lot more similar. Um, so. 
Why don't you talk a little bit about the training guides? Yeah, yeah, why don't I do that? So um, I can talk specifically about our, uh, what we did most recently. So um, uh, right when did we do it? We started in, uh, in uh, September. Oh. Well, yeah, well, we, we have, um, we, ha we actually run it like a regular team. So um, it's a, uh, an open source project like any other. Um, the um, we have weekly um, uh, weekly sprints like any other project on IRC. Um, we use the mailing list. It's it's a regular project. The output just isn't Python. It's um, it's uh, RST and um, and uh, some uh, shell scripts to run um, a training cluster. So um, without getting into too many details of how it works, it's essentially to um, train people up to a certain couple of levels of experience um, using. Um, some material that we put together, and we um, uh, teaching on OpenStack. So it's essentially uh, teaching OpenStack to be an operator and or um, an administrator. We have two versions of the, the material out there right now. Um, but uh, what we did most recently is uh, starting in September, we ran six different sessions in um, San Francisco um, out of HP's Santa Clara campus. And um, we had some volunteers that volunteered as teachers. Um, and uh, we went through six different sessions going over the material. Um, we summarized it into slides. We used to have it in uh, more of a book format, but after um, some uh, trials and tribulations on getting people to use that and actually make it consumable in a user group setting, because that was really always our, our intent. Um, I've been working with the user groups um, for the last couple of years and uh, organizing the San Francisco one, and um, we wanted to teach people OpenStack rather than just kind of give them talks. Um, wanted to make it more participatory. So um, so we turned it into slides as, a, as a, um, a result of that, where it was more digestible in that kind of format. Um, six different sessions. They were um, attended anywhere from about 80 to 150. Um, it's really great participation. Um, one of the things we didn't get to do this time, it wasn't, um, it was, it was participatory where we had um, back and forth from the, the crowd, but we didn't actually set up any resources. Um, so that's something that we, we aim to fix. So um, I'm, I'm uh, working with the team. We actually have a, a meeting later on this week to figure out how we can incorporate some of the, the cool stuff that uh, Steph has done into the user groups. We could, we could just reproduce what Steph has done with ups, open Upstream um, and or we could try to morph in some of the different pieces as like a, um, as a, a longer running version of uh, what Upstream has done. His is very, uh, very tight over two days. Generally, what people that show up to the user groups, um, there's different expectations, and usually um, having sessions over multiple, um, um, going into details on how to actually operate a cloud is, is what a lot of the people, at least in my area, are most interested in. Um, so uh, being able to, to provide both is what we're looking to do. So I kind of rambled a little bit, but yeah. um, is that Uh, not at this moment. Um, there was a revamp of the site recently. It looks really cool. But as part of it, um, we kind of dropped out because um, all of us have full-time jobs. <laughs> so for, for upstream training, we are publishing the slides um, on, on the site now, on oh, the draft. Yes, okay. we, right. we put the... Uh, how do you get access to it right now? docs.openstack.org slash draft okay. upstream training. You, okay, you, great. Can, you can find it. And uh, in the next couple of days, I will send a patch for linking directly from docs.openstack.org. Um, yeah, the one thing that I wanted to add uh, that I forgot to mention is that upstream training actually continues after the two days training. Um, I mentioned that we have mentors in the room, and the mentors uh, work directly with the people, the participants, uh, during the session to help them pick low-hanging fruit bugs or, or create create, select other bugs that are easy enough or, or uh, within reach uh, with by the by the attendants and uh, uh, and set a date for a next meeting online to continue to continue working on that bug until and we consider Don completed the training um, after all the people that have attended have either dropped out or completed a bug completed the submission 
yeah, and become uh, an active technical contributor to OpenStack. Yes. Um. Yes, we've we've created uh, we've created two other training guides. Uh, one is administrator, one is operator. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's available in the Ice House and Juno version. We haven't updated it yet for Kilo. So, so um, this has been. Um, for the people that I work with, it, this has been uh, actually a kind of a side project. We don't do training. In fact, I think there's really only one person in our team that actually is a, um, he's a teacher, um, teaches at university. The rest of us were just doing this as a part-time because we were working with user groups. So um, I'm actually looking to, um, I just changed jobs, so I'm actually looking to incorporate our training for our product uh, Metaconda and with the uh, the training that we do in upstream training, so I'm going to try to morph that in so that I can get some of my devs to contribute a little bit, give a little bit more oomph, and see if I can get maybe some other companies to copy us. So make it a little bit of a part time, uh, yeah, one, one part time gig. Yes. No, uh, question okay. is, um, I, what is the target student? As I understand, it's more um, a potential OpenStack developer. It's not really an OpenStack user. Is it right or? So for upstream training, we we teach uh, contributors, yes, developers of OpenStack pieces. But for the training guides, uh, there are two other targets: uh, operators and uh, cloud administrators. Yeah. So that um, the intention of the guides were always to uh, teach four different escalating levels of experience. And what Steph has done is um, uh, essentially, well, not essentially, to teach de developers. Um, and uh, that actually ties in relatively well with the other two guides that we created. Um, the right now, they're not uh, organized that efficiently because the formatting is slightly different and the, the, um, the voice is slightly different. So we'll be working, that over, working on that over this next release cycle so that um, there's more flow. And uh, hopefully, it's more consumable by um, other user groups. So that's that's always been the intention that um, the user groups would be able to use this stuff, and that's why we were publishing it. So and also, um, anybody could download it anytime they wanted to, and if they wanted to use it for commercial purposes, you know, go for it. So, and that's exactly what I aim to do with my company. I'm going to morph some of it in with the building dev stack, building part of it, teaching some basic. Um, uh, explaining basically how OpenStack works, and then building our how to build our uh, our uh, L3 orchestrator for Neutron on top of that. So that morphing the two together. So and hopefully more companies follow our our lead. Hi, um, <coughs> my name is Tony. Um, I, I'd like uh, I'd like to get involved in what you guys are doing. I actually have experience uh, in training OpenStack. I've done about six classes. 20 to 50 students each class over the last 18 months. Um, I used to work for Red Hat uh, in their partner name and group and, and various internal training. Um, I developed the content using a lot of the material that I, I found in um, docs at OpenSec. Uh, so it's great content. Um, I did change it quite a bit, and I have you know all that stuff ready in my laptop. Um, I live in the Bay Area as well. Uh, I've just been traveling around doing stuff, and I'd like to start doing something you know, at home so I don't have to travel too much. Um, if, if there's a chance for me to uh, come out and do something with you guys, I'd love to do it. Um, I also have uh, a data center that I put up on my own, my own cache and stuff, uh, which I used. I wanted to try to give back to the community a little bit. So if there's some opportunity there, uh, I know I showed up late, but uh, sorry about that. Um, it, I'd like to do something. No apology necessary. So um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you participate. So um, there's Monday morning trading guides meetings. Um, so if you just go to, um, uh, if you search in a browser for uh, OpenStack meetings and training, you'll find it. It'll pop right up first. Um, we have uh, weekly meetings. We're not having one this week, obviously. Um, uh, but. Um, yeah, just show up on IRC, and um, that's the easiest way to get started. Um, I'm in the Bay Area. The other people that are on the training team, uh, with well, Steph's in the Bay Area part of the time as well. Um, they're outside of the country, so we, we kind of coordinate. Um, 
long story short, love to have you. So please. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, any more questions? Okay. Well, <laughs> pub crawl. Yay. There's there's beer to be had. <laughs> thank you. So thank you.